Well, let's go back to our top story, the legal hunting of an elephant in Namibia. Let's speak to Masha Kalanina, an international trade policy specialist at the Wildlife Department of the Humane Society International in Johannesburg. Um, thanks so much um, for speaking to us um, this morning. And what do you make of Namibia's method of tackling elephant conservation, allowing legal hunting? Um, well, first of all, thank you so much for having Humane Society International on your show. And our organization opposes all forms of trophy hunting or killing animals for fun. Um, now, I want to make something clear about Namibia. Namibia is a very special case in Africa. It has one of the lowest levels of corruption, according to Transparency International, and one of the lowest levels of human population for its geographic size. This is not something that's replicated in any other country in southern Africa where trophy hunting is practiced. So this set um, of uh, circumstances is really what allows for uh, good conservation outcomes. And it's really not trophy hunting that is responsible for some of the successes in Namibia. So I, I think that first and foremost, we believe that trophy hunting is not necessary for Namibia to be successful at conserving its animals and that photo tourism would actually be much more successful. Well, what professional hunters are, are arguing is that it, it, by keeping um, elephant hunting legal, people, people there can see the benefit of po poaching in terms of the, the money it brings to the economy, the jobs it's bringing to people in the area who otherwise would, wouldn't have jobs if not for this. Well, that's the interesting part, is that um, when you compare photographic tourism and trophy hunting, photographic tourism operates year-round. Trophy hunting, about six months a year. Um, one uh, camp may see about 30 hunters versus a uh, photographic camp can bring in over 2,000 people. Now, you do the math, which camp requires more staff and employs more people? So if we want to benefit local communities, let's employ people through photographic tourism. Well, has it really worked, though? Because we have been doing that for years, and now these elephants are, are nearly extinct. Has it been successful? Well, I'm, I mean, generally... We, tourism as a whole has been it's the saving grace for, for the South African countries. And I, I'll give you an example. We, we recently commissioned an economic study, and I can show you a chart here. This is tourism employment for eight countries that we assessed in Africa. And uh, all tourism brings in over 2 million jobs. And this is trophy hunting down here. And then we are looking at tourist spending over $1.5 billion dollars is spent from all tourism, this is trophy hunting down here. So if, if, uh, if you're saying that tourism isn't working, well, then trophy hunting is certainly at the bottom um, as well. Well, Masha, we, we couldn't really um, see, see that diagram that you, did, that you had there. But um, have you actually had a chance to, to watch this, um, this VT by our special <laughs> correspondent, Alex Crawford? Have you seen it? Yes, and I'd be happy to comment on the video. Well, look. When you, from what you saw in it, the professional hunter, when he killed the elephant, he was brought to tears. You mentioned that this is being done for fun. This is, this is a man who is actually trying to save elephants. He says he wants his, his daughter to see elephants rather in, in wildlife rather than seeing them in the zoo. This is something that he genuinely believes in the long term will save the number of elephants um, in his country. Well, um, a few things about the video. Number one, it took seven shots to kill that elephant and over four hours until it was finally dead. And interestingly enough, I watched as the safari operator guided your cameras away from the convulsing body of the elephant as it was laying there dying. Because this is graphic, um, you wouldn't have needed that graphic warning at the beginning of the video if this was not disturbing for people to watch. So I think that um, even his daughter would find images like this disturbing. And seeing him brought to tears, well, if I watched a majestic elephant die before my eyes, an animal that actually mourns the dead, and I guarantee you that his herd will mourn that elephant, and not even to mention that he was probably a breeding bull and is important biologically to that herd, um, I would be brought to tears as well. I mean, Masha, this is, this is really something I think we can go back and forth with here in terms of the best way to, um, to deal with elephant conservation in Africa and in Namibia. But... From your point of view, from your perspective, what is the best way to deal with it? Because there, there are, there's been a number of methods been introduced to, to try and increase numbers to prevent um, these, these animals from becoming extinct. Not necessarily all of them have worked. What do you think needs to be done? 
I think we need to put an end to um, making commodities out of our wildlife and putting a price on their head. This is what has created the poaching prices of the African elephant that we see today is the incredible value placed, monetary value placed on their tusks. And what we, our message is only elephants need their tusks and we do not need them. So we need to stop treating them as commodities and appreciate them in the wild through photographic tourism, which brings in um, billions of dollars into the economies of South African countries. Okay, Masha Kalanina from the Wildlife Department of the Humane Society International. Thanks so much indeed. Thank